Hello, everybody. My name is Neil, and I'm here today to affirm that human activity is the main cause of global warming. I have three main points of con contention that I will read to urge a pro-ballot in today's debate. In order for us to be well-versed in the debate today, I'll start with defining human activity. Human activity can be seen as anything caused by humans that wouldn't have been caused by nature otherwise. This can include simple ideas like cutting down trees in the forest to using electricity, driving, flying, and using other man-made inventions. If it weren't to occur in nature naturally, then it's human activity. The other is to define main cause. Merriam-Webster defines maze, main as the principle or majority. With that in mind, if I'm able to convince you that the principal cause of global warming is human activity, then it shows a pro vote in today's debate. My first argument is the greenhouse gas effect. As a result of human activity, the amount of methane, carbon dioxide, and nitrous oxide we release into the atmosphere is alarming. For 800,000 years, natural amounts of carbon dioxide ranged from 180 to 300, uh, 300 parts per million. However, in less than 100 years, our levels have risen to 400 parts per million, 40%. And what makes this more alarming is the fact that it's not naturally occur occurring. The American Geophysical Union released a statement in 2010 that human activities are increasingly altering the Earth's climate. These effects are added to natural influences have been present over Earth's history. However, scientific evidence indicates strongly that natural influences cannot explain the rapid increase in global near surface temperatures observed during the second half of the 20th century, which is why the EPA finds that the 200 billion tons of carbon dioxide we release through human activity can simply not be explained through nature. For these reasons, it becomes clear that the greenhouse gas effect is caused. Hi, my name is Nelson, and I'm going to dispute actually the entire claim here as ridiculous that human activity is the main cause of global warming. First of all, over the last seven, since 1997, the globe has not even been warming. So I don't know why you would even call it global warming. That's why nobody calls it global warming anymore. They call it climate change. But uh, I won't bore you with that. So number one, I want to talk about science. So, and this kind of gets to the idea that there is a global consensus, which we know is nonsense. Uh, science is a search for truth, not truth itself. Science says nothing. Scientists do. So it's merely, it's just an interpretation of the data. We know that the data itself, because ClimateGate in 2009 and 2011, and according to NASA itself, which went back and changed a lot of its own data, uh, is not trustworthy because it's being manipulated. So science is not a consensus. Uh, we see that Dr. Marshall discovered ulcers were caused by bacteria. They used to, people used to think that they were caused by stress or something. So that's the consensus, the IPCC bureaucratic nonsense. Um, <clears throat> scientific consensus in the 70s is that it was warm. It was cooling. They even wrote a paper. The NSA or the CIA wrote a paper about the danger of global cooling uh, back in the 70s. And as far as CO2, CO2 is 0.04% of the air. It, that, it's actually in historically been much higher. Um, yes, methane is more powerful. 97% uh, of CO2 release comes from the oceans. Scientific, scientists say it themselves. Uh, as, as it warms, the oceans release more. As it cools, they absorb more. Again, historically, it's been much higher many times over history. Um, the changes we see today are rather insignificant. Again, we haven't seen warming. In so one of the main arguments that I was expecting from the negative is to say, well, CO2 occurs naturally. And there's a theory, if you want to go deeper throughout the oceans, is that plankton is actually the one that's absorbing CO2. And so let's say that every scientist predicted this theory, which they did. They said the CO2 is being naturally absorbed. They tested this in any computer model that they ran. Out of 97 surveyed scientists in the NOAA, all came back with the theory that if you use a computer model and simulate what should be naturally occurring CO2, none of the, uh, none of the actual computer models rendered this. However, if you adjust these computer models and actually account for human activity, every single one of those computer models came back positive that the Earth is warming not because of the fact of naturally occurring plankton absorption in the ocean, but because of the fact that we are humanly active, uh, our human activity is releasing the CO2. 
But then let's start with a statement that you brought up, which is that the globe hasn't been warming. And I find that frankly ridiculous. In the last 30 years, global temperatures have increased by 1.4 degrees Fahrenheit. And that's unquestionable. And the fact in the last 200 years, we've seen almost no increase in the global temperature. But then in the last 30, we saw 1.5 degrees. And there are some scientists. Yes, I know NASA had a survey that they said there was some data collection. But let's look at the last five years. There has been predominantly most research indicates that in fact the earth is warming, temperatures are rising, and there may be some manipulation of data. But what, what, what I find most interesting is five years later, NASA actually came out and said that although they manipulated some of the data, the conclusion still stands, and that's the earth is warming itself. And because of the fact that they found that almost every one of their non-botched data servers in the ocean found that this was because of an increase of CO2 level, they found that in fact global climate change, or if we're going to call it global warming, is in fact happening. So there really isn't any indication. Well, nobody's denying that climate changes, but you only have 120 years of data. And if we figure that it's 4 billion years old, that is 0.000003% of the history of the Earth that you're using the data from. You don't have 200 years, you have about 120. And even that's not very reliable. And again, NASA themselves said they manipulate the data. Uh, we have climate gate where all the data comes from, the data that people study, we know that's manipulated. NASA declared 2014 the hottest year on record, even themselves, they said it, they were only 34% sure. Um, Computer models, you mentioned computer models, but all of the computer models have been proven to be absurdly wrong. And computer models, I'm sorry, but computer models and models are not reality. Uh, they use distorted date, garbage in, garbage out. So uh, I'm gonna pass the mic right now. All right, so in regards to that, some of the problems with the data that we're gonna just take the assumption that, all right, the data was skewed and that we changed it. So let's look at one of the studies that was actually cited by NASA and that was involved in climate change. So that was by Richard Mueller, a PhD of Berkeley University. And so he studied this for over 10 years and he came to NASA and he said that the earth is, uh, that the earth is warming and that in fact, global warming is caused by human activity. NASA published the data along with others and then NASA was found to be false for botching some of the data. So he redid his entire report and what he did was he looked at data selection of prior than selected 20% of the available temperature stations because people claimed, well, you can't use all 100%, some of it's gonna be botched. Then they said there was poor station quality. So we analyzed good stations and the poor ones and then wrote a regression report to say why the poor ones didn't work. And then he looked at human intervention and made sure that all of his work was automated and completely hands off. At the conclusion with another dozen scientists, and this was for NASA, I'll read the quote of his conclusion. He says, I conclude that the prior estimates of the rate of warming are correct. I'm now going to take a step further. Humans are almost entirely the cause of global warming. And Peter Gleek, a PhD of the Pacific Institute, says it even better. The inability to comprehend the planetary influence of humans isn't based on reviewing and rejecting scientific evidence, which is clear to 97 to 98% of climate scientists publishing in the field. It is based on ignoring it or disbelieving it. Insofar as the majority of scientists do stand with the belief that the earth is in fact warming. And even if we were to take the assumption of 120 years, in the last 30 years alone, we cannot find a natural explanation for the reason why we have risen our temperatures by 1.5 degrees Celsius. Well, again, I point out that it's been hotter. It's been hotter many times over history before man was around, before man was a significant part of the, well, you'd say atmosphere, I guess. Um, the, again, just computer models, what is good day, uh, stations, what is bad stations, according to this single individual. Um, the 97% lie that you told, or that you repeated, sorry. John Cook, the environmental journal, bureaucrat, basically, he had over 12,000 articles. He only read the abstracts. He had somebody read them for him. Methodology admitted, he admitted was poor, 97%. Um, had word basically had words that said climate change. Only 41 of the 12 to 13,000 actually said that man causes climate change. Uh, one third of the time, these individuals disagreed about what the subject is. 65% of the time, they disagreed with the author of the paper themselves. So the 97% is just nonsense. It's just an absurd lie that continu is continually told by Obama and the rest. Uh, you mentioned 
actually warming theme you say it's warming here because of man uh, why is it warming on mars and jupiter is that because of marvin driving around in his spaceship or what all right, so I think you were clever with that joke that Mars is warming, and I'm going to tell you all the planets are warming, and you yourself knew before you asked that question that the reason why other planets are warming is because the atmosphere naturally warms other planets. But our debate here today is about the Earth and why that's warming, and that's because of human activity, and the reason why is because under natural assumptions, we could account for that the amount that the Earth should be in, uh, that the amount of greenhouse gas emissions should be accounting. So let's say that it was supposed to be 100 parts per million. Natural phenomenons would explain that this is happening. But instead, the EPA finds that 200 billion tons of carbon di dioxide were deposited. And so you're going to bring up the statistic that it's 0.1% of all greenhouse gas effects. But CO2 is the most important of those greenhouse gas effects because of the fact that CO2 directly heats this layer. And when the greenhouse gas effect gets amplified because of CO2. So even though there's less CO2 gas, most scientists have said that it's up to 20 times the amount of heating effect than any other greenhouse of gas effect. And I'm not going to say that this is caused any, in any form naturally because of the fact that most of the CO2 consumption that we've seen in the last 30 years is all due in part by machines and human activity. And then to go off this point about why our, or why we, we, we saw the earth was hotter uh, many times before. I just don't think that that's true at all. And I frankly think that's a lie. The earth has never been hotter than it was before in 2016. And there's almost every scientist has come to the conclusion that in the last decade, the earth is, earth is the hottest it's ever been. Actually, that's not true. There's a over 30 or 40,000, it's about 10 years ago, it was up to 30,000 that had signed a document saying that uh, there is at least a questionable questionable to whether or not man is even involved in the warming of the planet. And that was 10 years ago, or that climate change is happening because of man caused anything. Um, but yeah, it, it has been warmer. We know this. Uh, they used to grow grapes in Greenland up in the uh, where it's frozen over now. Uh, there was a World War II aircraft that almost went, it, they, what was it? There was only, I think, five left or something in the world. So they went up to Greenland where it crashed in World War II and they found it under 200 feet of ice. Now, was that because it was warming that that ice formed? And you know, the earth gets warmer, we get more ice? No, it's because it, it's not warming around the world. Uh, all of the predictions of your data have come to be disproven. Al Gore in 2006 said that in 10 years there would be no polar ice caps, but NASA itself says this: the Antarctic ice cap is at record highs. Is that because of warming? Seems odd to me. Uh, the Arctic ice cap is shrinking a little bit, but you know, the, the polar bears, they've got five times as many polar bears around as when Al Gore was born. But Green, uh, Greenpeace went up there to prove the Northwest Passage was usable again. Uh, they got frozen in the ice. They had to be rescued and they were arrested by Russia. So that's all just ridiculous. The, the computer models have been disproven. Uh, all the d manipulated data that the people that are out to make a lot of money. It's just a big scam. And I'm, I'm going to post a bunch of articles under here, but I'll, I'll hold that off for a little bit. By the way, today, the hottest day in Seattle today was 1953. Tomorrow, or 24, sorry, tomorrow it's 1899 is the hottest day in Seattle. And 1953 was the hottest day yesterday. All right. So let's talk about this idea that NASA found that the Arctic Sea is diminishing. But what you conveniently left out was the quote right after. So I'm going to take this from NASA itself. This was published in 2015. Even though the Antarctic sea ice reached a new maximum record this past September, global sea ice is still decreasing at an alarming rate. This is from NASA's Goddard Space Flight, uh, Space Flight Center. And this is the same way you quoted the Greenland statistic. Great. Maybe in Greenland there's more ice. But on whole, on the whole is what we should be analyzing right now. We've seen that ice and the fact that the polar ice caps are melting. And I don't think there's any scientists out there. Frankly, let's not even say scientists. Let's just say the general public voting here today that believes that we're at an all-time high. I would find it fairly ridiculous that anyone would vote for you off the premise that our polar ice caps are going to maintain themselves. And I could say in the next 30 years, we would see almost a 50% decrease. But I'm going to leave that up to the voters of the debate today. But then you brought up this statistic about Seattle. Great. They're going to be they're going to be colder tomorrow than they were in 1899. 
But insofar as global temperatures, again, we have to look at this from a, a mature perspective, from a macroeconomic perspective. Let's not look in at single cities or a single uh, Arctic ice cap, right? We're looking at this from the whole. And that's in fact that every on whole, every single continent has increased their temperatures at phenomenons which can't be explained naturally. Insofar as we can't find a single case of how we are actually going to be able to see why our uh, why our temperatures are increasing so drastically without a natural explanation, it goes back to the idea that the greenhouse gas effect is unquestionable. Human activity is causing the increase in the amount of greenhouse gas emissions, which is itself entrapping itself and heating the earth at rates which can't be explained naturally. So let's not look at Greenland or let's not look at Seattle, but as on the globe itself. Well, <clears throat> again, Greenland is part of it because Greenland is one of the, the arguments that's always made. And there was a study done by UW researchers here in Seattle that, or former UW students, that found that the, the melting of certain parts of Greenland is due to natural underground, under, excuse me, under the ocean volcanic activity. So I don't know if man is causing that, but it seems to me probably not. So again, I mentioned some of the, these are, again, these are just predictions. So I just, Threw that out there, the Seattle part is a anecdotal. The fact that it's been much, much warmer here. It's been, uh, in fact, we just had the coldest winter in history. Uh, you had, well, I don't know where you are, but over in the East Coast, they had the coldest winter and the snowiest winter in history just last year, the year before. So the uh, most of the people that are, well, I'll kind of, I'm going to save that to my final, but. Again, the, the idea that temperatures are rising is just not true. They haven't risen since 1997. So, so with my final uh, words in this debate, what I'm going to say is that naturally CO2 levels cannot be explained. The greenhouse gas effect is in fact taking place. In the last 30 years, we saw a 40% spike. The earth is increasing its uh, temperature exponentially, 1.5 degrees Fahrenheit in the last decade. And because of the fact that there's no natural phenomenon for why this is happening, just look at the global ice caps. They're melting. This is because of human activity. So you said exponentially. I don't know if you realize this, but that means very, very fast. The Earth is not warming very, very fast. It's warmed about one and a half degrees over the last entire century, but and not at all since 1997. So we've had 20 years of nothing. CO2 levels, again, they've been much higher historically before man was even involved. I mentioned other planets that are warming. Uh, Marv, Marvin the Martian, he's you know running his generator or something up on Mars. We've got Jupiter. Just ex They're all exiting ice ages. Uh, and that's because the fact is that the planet itself and the sun are the, uh, the largest contributor to changes in climate and temperature and all the likes. So uh, I also, I, I was going to talk about the fact that most of the people that push these things don't actually care themselves. So the, the preachers of the religion that is anthropogenic global climate change, nonsense, uh, but it's ministers, Al Gore, Leo, Obama, Bill Nye, all these people, they don't care. They don't care. They don't actually believe any of it. They, they jet set in their private jets and their super mega yachts. So the people that talk don't care because they know it's a lie. So uh, I'll talk about that. And you mentioned ice caps again. I'll talk about ice caps again. They're not melting. They're at record highs. So there's no problem. Nothing to worry about there. There is a little bit of melting in certain areas. Uh, some of it actually is due to man, act, man's activity there in Kilimanjaro, I believe it is. They're deforesting down there. So uh, you know, another thing I always just take a big issue with is man. Why isn't man part of nature? I mean, man is part of nature. You separate man and nature, but yet if we talked about this on a different level, you, you would assume that man is just a natural function of nature. So I think 